Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, last time uh, we talked about the definition and properties of the Poisson process. Today we will continue with further properties. If you remember at the end of the last lecture, uh, we talked about something that is uh, sometimes known as the random incidence paradox or the random arrival paradox uh, in the Poisson process. If you remember, uh, the problem was bus arrivals occur at random according to a Poisson process and uh, the mean inter-arrival time between two buses is uh, 10 minutes. I arrive at random at the bus stop. Uh, what is the inter-arrival time that I sample? Meaning the total time uh, from the last bus that arrived before me to the next bus that will arrive after me. And we argued that the mean duration of this interval is not 10 minutes but 20 minutes and I said what is going wrong here what is what is going on uh, is it because I'm unlucky um, is, is there a problem this is sometimes known as a paradox but of course it is not uh, because it follows from the uh, first of all the fact that we showed that the a Poisson po process going backwards in time is also a Poisson process meaning when I arrive at random, the time uh, from this time uh, to the previous, uh, I mean, the last arrival in the past is an exponential random variable with mean lambda and the amount of time from now until the next arrival is also an exponential random variable with, uh, with um, the same mean. So this is what I mean. I arrive at random at time at some time t and sample the Poisson process. The time r prime um, going backwards in time uh, up to the last arrival in the process before I came and the time R, the residual time of the process until the next arrival after I came, they are both exponential with rate lambda and by the independent increments property of the Poisson process they are independent as well. So then, uh, this total duration that I'm sampling is r plus r prime. And we argued that this is not an exponential. This is an Erlang distributed random variable of uh, order 2 with parameter n. And in fact, the expectation is equal to twice 1 over lambda, 2 over lambda. Okay. So random arrivals like this sample larger intervals. And what, what is the explanation for this? How is it possible that when I arrive at random, uh, the mean interval that I'm sampling is twice as long as the average inter-arrival interval? In order to understand this, we will solve a discrete problem first. So let's read this example. Um, suppose there are three buses uh, departing from uh, the Metu campus to Kuzilai this morning. Okay? Uh, the first bus uh, had only 10 passengers on board. The second bus had 70 and the third has 40. Uh, Ego, the company who runs the buses, uh, wants to find out whether the buses are too crowded. Okay, so in order to do that, they decide to survey people, passengers. Okay, so uh, what if they decide to sample several passengers from riding these buses, buses at random and ask them how many people uh, were there on the bus with them? Suppose people sort of have a pretty good estimate of how many people there are on the bus, okay? 
What is the expected result that Ego finds by doing this survey? Let's try to find out. So let's, uh, so basically we pick a passenger at random. When we pick a passenger at random, they come from either of the three buses. What is the probability that they come from the first bus? Uh, 10 over, right? 70 plus, uh, well, a, a total, there are a total of how many passengers? 70 plus 40 plus 10, 120. Right. So uh, the passenger is going to tell us how many people there were on the bus with them. So suppose that number is n, the uh, number on the bus. So with probability, so basically let's just say this. So with probability um, 10 over 120, the person is from the first bus. And they tell us that the number on the bus was 10. The number of people on the bus was 10. Uh, with probability 70 over 120, I pick a person from the second bus. And the person will tell me there were 70 people. With probability um, 40 over 120, I'll pick a person from the third bus and they're going to tell me that there were 40 people on the bus. So the expected then uh, value of n, the number that I hear from the randomly selected passenger, is going to be 10 times 10 over 120 plus 70 times 70 over 120 plus 40 times 40 over 120, and that comes down to 55. <clears throat> Right. But on the other hand, if Ego asks bus drivers how many people were on your bus, what would they find? So pick a bus at random if you want, or average all the, uh, the number of people in each bus uh, alternatively. Pick a bus at random. Each bus is equally likely to get picked. So the number we find for the average number of passengers on the bus is going to be the average of the numbers 10, 70, and 40, which is going to be what? 40. You see, it's the same situation. When we pick a passenger at random, we find a different average than when we pick a bus at random. Why do you think this is true, first of all, for the bus problem? And then we can maybe interpret the result in the language of the random incidence situation in the Poisson process. Hmm. Exactly. Uh, when you pick a person at random, chances are they come from a more crowded bus, right? People on the more crowded bus are more likely to get picked. So how does that carry over to the random arrival situation in the Poisson process? This is the Poisson process. There are large intervals and small intervals. And when I arrive at random, is it more likely that I arrive in a large interval or a small interval? A large interval. So large intervals are more likely to get picked. 
by random arrivals. And that is the analogy to this problem. So when we compute uh, the expected inter-arrival time as 1 over lambda, are we sampling inter-arrival times by random arrival? No. We are averaging over all inter-arrival intervals. So every inter-arrival interval is equally likely to get counted. Every inter-arrival interval is counted once, essentially. Like, so this is like averaging over buses. But when we arrive at random and sample an interval at random, it's like average, uh, picking a passenger at random and uh, averaging over answers of passengers. So that's the idea. I hope now that's perfectly clear. It's not? If it's not, let me know. Okay. Good. So now that we understood this, uh, we will be able to use it in problems. The random arrival uh, sort of paradox is not specific to the Poisson process. It can happen in other arrival processes as well. But you can give me an example for when it won't happen. When will it not happen? What kind of arrival process will not have this? Deterministic, very nice. So deterministic arrivals, when you have deterministic arrivals, then uh, every interval is equal anyway. Right? We will not have this problem situation. All right. So the next topic that we are going to consider is splitting and merging Poisson processes. Let's uh, study uh, splitting first, and let's study through an exercise that we will do it uh, do together now. Um, let's show that when we send each arrival of a Poisson process at rate lambda to a process A with probability P and a process B with probability 1 minus B, the resulting processes A and B that, are, that result from this operation uh, are each Poisson with rates P lambda and 1 minus P lambda. Okay, uh, and there are, there's a hint for two different ways to do this. Let's apply both. Okay, so I take a Poisson process and I'm going to randomly split it into two, essentially. For each arrival, I make an independent decision where to send it. These are my arrivals. And for each arrival, with probability P, I send the arrival to process A, for example. This gets picked for process A and this gets picked for process A. So these would be my arrivals in process A. And with probability 1 minus P, each arrival gets picked for process B. You see, this is process A, this is process B. Some of the arrivals go to A, some of the, the remaining go to B. Okay, suppose the original process has rate lambda and let the rate of this process be lambda A and this be lambda B. We will show that they are both Poisson processes. How do we do that? Let's apply the hint. Which one should we do first? The first method or the second method? Second. Second seems easier, right? To use the baby Bernoulli definition. So, um, well, um, then let's, in the baby Bernoulli definition, remember, we divide time into little chunks of size delta. Now, uh, suppose this is the original process and this is process A. And this is a chunk of size delta. 
Now, what is the probability that there is an arrival into process A in this interval of size delta? In order to have an arrival here, I first have to have an arrival here, and it needs to get picked for process A. That happens with probability P. So, uh, so this is the probability that maybe, actually let's call this an A. The original process has arrivals n of t, and this has an A of t. In order for an A of delta to be 1, first n of delta must be 1, meaning arrival into first process, and that gets picked for process A. But the process of picking is independent of whether there's an arrival or not, so we can multiply the probabilities of each of these events. So remember, uh, the probability that n of delta is 1 is lambda delta plus little o of delta. And we multiply that with p. So what do we find? Lambda p delta plus o of delta. So that already indicates to us that um, looks like that process A has rate lambda times P. But do we know that it is a Poisson process? Let's also show that uh, the probability that an A of delta is bigger than or uh, equal to 2. In order for this to be bigger than or equal to 2, well, uh, the original process has to have two or more arrivals, but what is that? That is order delta. So we, I can clearly write this. Uh, then uh, what is the probability that this is zero? I can subtract from one this and this. So I find one minus lambda delta plus, oh sorry, lambda p delta. 1 minus lambda p delta plus o of delta. Okay, so then uh, process A satisfies the baby Bernoulli probabilities with the rate lambda p, lambda times p, apparently. But in order to be a Poisson process, this is not enough. We need two more things. What are they? Independent increments and stationary in in increments. But the independent increments property is clearly inherited from the original process. So is the stationary increments property because the process of selecting uh, is independent of uh, the uh, arrival process. So uh, independent and stationary increments properties are inherited. So then clearly, uh, process A is a Poisson process at rate lambda p. How about process B? By the exact same argument, with p replaced by 1 minus p. B is a Poisson process at rate what? Lambda 1 minus P. Any questions? All right, so that was hint number two. What if we, instead of this, applied hint number one? What do you think? It's, the hint says, 
use uh, the transform of the interarrival time in the uh, split processes. Say, for example, take process A and consider its interarrival time. X A. X. Suppose we are considering the arrival of the first, I mean, the first interarrival time, meaning the time to the first arrival. Now, there is going to be an arrival into process A after a geometric number of trials. Because every arrival in the original process is sent to process A with probability P. Maybe the first one is sent to pro, uh, uh, process A. Maybe the second one, etc. So we will have a geometric number of trials, n. Uh, and the nth one is going to be uh, sent to A, right? n can be 1, 2, up to infinity. So then can you, do you agree that the uh, time until uh, the first arrival to A is the sum of the xi's, i from 1 to n, where xi's are interarrivals from the original process. So xi's are uh, arrivals, interarrival times, interarrivals from the original process. And what is n? n is geometric, it's a geometric random variable with parameter p. So let me mark them here actually. So suppose this is t equals 0, this is x1, x2, x3, x4. Suppose this did not get selected into process A. But this is the first one that gets selected into process A. In that case, we will not have this. This is t equals 0. And xA is x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. OK. Any question here? So, um, so then. Let's compute the moment generating function mxa of s. That is going to be expectation of e to the s xa, right? By definition, this is the expectation of e to the s summation xi. I'm out of space here, so I will continue somewhere else. How about we erase this part? Uh, mxa of s is expectation of e to the s summation xi i from 1 to n. What do you suggest we do in this situation? I have a geometric sum of exponentials. A random number of random variables are getting summed. How about I use iterated expectation? Because it's hard to directly deal with a random sum of random variables. But I can definitely condition on n. And then I get a deterministic sum of uh, random variables. So I can. Write this as expectation over n, expectation of e to the s summation xi, i from 1 to n, uh, given n. And then uh, n becomes uh, inside the inner expectation, and n is a, a deterministic number, so I can uh, express this. First of all, let me just write the inner exponential as a product of exponentials. Uh, 
And then I realize the Xi's are independent. So the expectation of the product splits into the product of expectations. Uh, so this is the product e to the s x i, i from 1 to n. But each of these things are the same thing. It is the moment generating function of an exponential over 8 lambda. This is from the original process. So what is that moment generating function? Do you remember? Lambda over lambda minus s. It's like the Laplace transform of an exponential. So lambda over lambda minus s. And I have n of those multiplied. So basically I have expectation of lambda over lambda minus s to the power n. And I'm, I now need to take the expectation over n. So far, so good, I hope. So, expectation of lambda over lambda minus s to the power n. <clears throat> Uh, maybe let me write it this way to be clear. I can sum over the geometric PMF. Right? Lambda over lambda minus s to the k. Uh, well, 1 minus p to the k minus 1 uh, p. k goes from 1 to infinity. Agree? p. Remember, is the probability that each arrival is sent to process A. Uh, and N is the total number of attempts until the first arrival into process A. So that N is geometric with parameter P, and this is its PMF. <clears throat> uh, so what can we do? Uh, maybe we can get P out of the... Uh, uh, summation here. So I'm going to maybe write it over here. I'm going to take one of these also out of the summation. Um, lambda p over lambda minus s summation k from 0 to infinity. Um, lambda 1 minus p divided by lambda minus s to the power k. Just a small manipulation of this summation. I took p and one of the, these terms out of the summation, and I combined the rest. And I realized uh, that I can um, start the summation at 0 and make this k. OK, so if the uh, inside, if the term uh, lambda 1 minus p or lambda minus s is summable, then you know what the sum is. 1 over uh, 1 minus lambda 1 minus p over lambda minus s. So that is lambda p over lambda minus s, lambda minus s over uh, lambda minus s minus lambda plus lambda p. And we get lambda p over lambda p minus s Oh my God, what is this? Huh? That is uh, the moment generating function <clears throat> of xA. And this is also the moment generating function of an exponential with parameter uh, lambda p. So we find uh, that xA is exponential with parameter lambda p. OK, good. So then, just by using definition 1 of the Poisson process, it turns out that uh, the interarrival time, since the interarrival times are exponentials with lambda p, 
and you can get the IID from the original process, uh, we conclude that the resulting uh, decimated process A is also Poisson. With rate lambda P. Any questions? Now we will find out something even uh, more surprising perhaps. I will claim that the resulting processes A and B, process A and process B, are independent. And I can show that. Let me try to show that. So I will now sort of use the, was it the third? The third definition, uh, which is um, the number of arrivals in any interval has the Poisson PMF, right? So uh, let's write the probability that uh, the number of arrivals by time t in uh, process A <clears throat> is equal to k <clears throat> and the number of arrivals into process B during the sa same amount of time, the same time window, is m. If we can somehow show that this probability breaks into the product of the probabilities of the individual events, then we have shown that the two processes are independent. Well, how do we do this? Um, maybe I can start by um, writing the... <clears throat> expressing, maybe, maybe I can use this. This is equal to the probability and A equals K and, and B is equal to M given uh, that N of T is equal to M plus K times the probability that n of t is equal to m plus k. Do you agree? Why? By definition of conditional probability, this multiplied by this gives us the probability that n of a equals n a of t equals k and b of t is equal to m and n a plus n b is equal to m plus k, but then these two together already imply this. So this is equal to just the left hand side. Okay. Right. Now, here is the, let me first of all write down what I know. What is the probability that n of t is equal to m plus k? I know that the original process is a Poisson process at rate lambda, and therefore the total number of arrivals in an interval of size t is Poisson distributed with mean lambda times t. So this is lambda times t raised to the power m plus k e to the minus lambda t over m plus k factorial. Now, how about this? This is the part that we really didn't really uh, consider so far. 
uh, in our discussion of the splitting <coughs> situation. <coughs> Given that there are n plus k arrivals, what is the probability that k of them go to process A, m of them go to process B? Right, because these are Bernoulli trials, right? Uh, the probability that k of them go here and m of them go there is, um, well, m plus k, choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the m, binomial. <clears throat> So we will multiply this with this. Let's try that. We need to, first of all, write this m plus k choose k. What is that? m plus k factorial over k factorial m factorial. And we have uh, here uh, p to the k, 1 minus p to the m. And from here, lambda t to the m plus k, e to the minus lambda t over m plus k factorial. So fortunately, this cancels with that. <clears throat> what else can we do to manipulate this? Ah, we can separate lambda t, very nice. We can separate it as lambda p plus lambda 1 minus p t, right? So this is equal to e to the minus lambda p t, e to the minus lambda 1 minus p t. And then the whole thing breaks into two pieces. Uh, <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> and we can also split this, right? Right, uh, so p to the k, lambda t to the k, e to the minus lambda p t over k factorial times uh, p 1 minus p to the m, lambda t to the m, uh, e to the minus lambda 1 minus p t over m factorial. Maybe let's rewrite that. Lambda pt to the k, e to the minus lambda pt over k factorial, multiplied by uh, 1 minus p lambda t to the m, e to the minus lambda 1 minus pt over m factorial. There you go. So an A of t times an B of t. An A of t is Poisson distributed with mean lambda p t. And this is Poisson with mean lambda 1 minus p t. Okay, so we've shown in an interesting way that the two processes that result from the random splitting of the original Poisson process are not only Poisson, but independent of each other. Could we have shown this using the baby Bernoulli argument? That is harder uh, because when you split a Bernoulli process, the resulting processes are not going to be independent. Uh, so this is the original process. This is process A, process B. Suppose there's an arrival here in the original process. And suppose it goes to A. Then we know that it did not go to B. Then we know that there is no arrival here. If there's an arrival here and it goes to to B, then we know it did not go to A. 
So that's sort of harder, but of course you can do a limiting argument. But the first method uh, already proved it. So when we split a Bernoulli process, by the way, into two uh, processes, the resulting process, are the resulting processes still Bernoulli? When we randomly split, split a Bernoulli arrival process into two, like this. Suppose the original uh, Bernoulli process has rate A, and we take each arrival, send it to process A with probability P. Is the resulting process A a Bernoulli process? Clearly. It's Bernoulli with um, the rate A times P. However, this process A and the process B, which contains the remaining arrivals, are not independent of each other because of this situation. But in the limit, of course, as delta goes to zero and the Bernoulli process approaches a Poisson process, then independence happens. Why is this happening? Because, well, uh, in continuous time, the probability that there's an arrival at exactly a given point in time is zero. Right? Okay. So, um, in the remaining amount of time we have, let's consider the merging of Poisson processes. Show that when we merge two independent Poisson processes at rates lambda A and lambda B, uh, we get a Poisson process at rate lambda A plus lambda B. Independent here is important, that's why I wrote it in capital letters. Of course, if you just merge any two Poisson processes, you don't necessarily get a Poisson process, but when they are independent, you do. And the hint says consider racing exponentials. What does the hint mean? Don't you hate it when people give you a hint and hint like a hint is like a puzzle? <laughs> Did anyone solve the puzzle? No? What does this have to do with racing exponentials? Well, this is process A. And it has some arrivals. And this is process B. And suppose it has some arrivals like this. And we make the sum process. <clears throat> or the merged process. And we record an arrival in the merged process whenever there's an arrival in one of the processes. We can still apply the baby Bernoulli and clearly see that, uh, you know, in an interval of size delta, the probability that n of delta is equal to 1 is the same as the probability that, well, either n a has an arrival, I mean, n a is 1, meaning process a has an arrival, or process b has an arrival. Right? But this means, this is the probability that A has an arrival plus the probability that B is an arrival minus the probability that they both have an arrival at the same time. So this is uh, lambda uh, A delta plus order delta plus lambda B delta plus order delta minus lambda A lambda B delta squared. Um, minus lambda a lambda b delta squared uh, plus other order delta terms. All of this thing is order delta anyway. So we find that this is lambda a plus lambda b delta uh, delta plus order delta. 
So clearly from the baby Bernoulli argument, we see that the merged process uh, is uh, going to be Bernoulli with red lambda A plus lambda B. I mean, I can repeat this argument for N of delta equals zero, N of delta greater than one, and uh, the stationarity and independent increment properties are already inherited from the original processes. But I don't want to do this. I want to use the hint. <laughs> so what is the hint telling me to do? Consider racing exponentials. Do you remember when we used racing exponentials? When two exponential processes are going on at the same time and we are looking for when the first one will be complete. The minimum of the two exponentials, right? Yes. Right. Very nice. Excellent, Semanor. You didn't only think about the first arrival in the merge process, but you talked about, you also uh, found us a way of extending this to further interarrivals in the merge process. So let's first consider, consider the first arrival to the merged process. Let this inter-arrival time be x1. Okay. Now, uh, the probability that x1 is bigger than x is the same as the probability that the first arrivals to process A and process B both happen after time small x. Because whenever uh, starting at time t equals zero, whenever there's an arrival to process A or process B, I'm going to record an arrival in this merged process. So I'm waiting for the minimum of these inter-arrival times xA and xB. Okay, so this is the same as saying that the, the probability that there is no arrival to A or B by time x. And since the processes A and B are independent and exponential, this is uh, the probability that uh, they, those first arrivals take longer than x, which is e to the minus lambda A x, e to the minus lambda B x, which is e to the minus lambda a plus lambda b x. So that completes the first thing that Semanur just suggested and shows that the first inter-arrival time x1 is exponential at the rate lambda a plus lambda b. That's cool. But how do we know that further inter-arrival times are exponential as well? So Semanur found, showed us a way of doing that because she said, after this first arrival, what happens in the future is identical, essentially, statistically, as what happens starting from time t equals zero, meaning by the fresh start property of the Poisson process, the time until the next arrival in the merged process is the minimum of two racing exponentials again. Okay, so xi is exponential at the rate lambda a plus lambda b for all i. So the merge process is a, a Poisson process. And extending the above by induction, we can find that when we merge independent Poisson processes of rates lambda 1 up to lambda k, we obtain a Poisson process of rate, which is the sum of all those rates. Any question? 
All right, then. In the next lecture, we will combine all of these properties that we've learned about the Poisson process to solve uh, sort of longer and interesting uh, problems about the Poisson process. Enjoy the, your break.